Hi everyone, in this video I will be showing how to make a very special kind of firework called a Senko Hanabi Sparkler. This is a Japanese firework that is very rare to find outside of Japan, and even within Japan is rather uncommon. Now this is a type of firework that is very simple to make in theory, but in practice turned out to be extremely difficult. In fact, I've been trying to perfect their composition and design for almost 10 years. Here's a clip that you can still find on my channel that was uploaded all the way back in 2008. This was a one-time success, and despite many attempts, I was not able to replicate it again. But I think finally I have come up with a method and a composition that reliably makes these Senko Hanabi sparklers so that they work every time. Now the ingredients that go into these sparklers are the same ones that are used to make black powder, but in a significantly different ratio so that they burn more slowly. This is potassium nitrate. This is an oxidizer, the oxygen source for this reaction. When this is heated, it releases oxygen that allows the other ingredients to burn. I also have some sulfur, which is an important ingredient for the reaction that causes the sparks in these sparklers. And then I also have some charcoal, which I've actually made myself. Now you could use regular store-bought charcoal like would be used in a barbecue, so long as it's what's known as lump charcoal. This still looks like pieces of wood inside the bag. You can't use briquettes because they actually mix clay into those briquettes as filler, and that will completely throw off the composition. The measurements for the composition used in these sparklers need to be extremely precise, so it's important to use a scale that is accurate to at least a tenth of a gram. Measuring by volume will not work at all. I have found that the best possible mixture to make these sparklers is six parts potassium nitrate, three parts sulfur, and one part charcoal. I'll be making 10 total grams of this mixture, so that works out to an even six grams of potassium nitrate, three grams of sulfur, and one gram of charcoal. This is some pine charcoal that I made myself, and making charcoal is a very easy process. You just need to find a metal container to put some sticks in that you want to turn into charcoal, poke a few holes in the lid of this container, and then heat it until smoke starts being ejected from the holes. After a length of time, the holes will stop ejecting smoke, and that's when you know your charcoal is done. Then you take the can off the fire, wait for it to cool, and the charcoal is ready to use. Even though most charcoal will work to make Senko Hanabi sparklers, I prefer pine, or any sort of wood that has a lot of sap or rosin in it, because that sort of wood will make the best sparks. So here are my three ingredients, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur, and now they just need to be thoroughly combined, and of course the charcoal needs to be ground into a powder. So I'll add them into a mortar and pestle, and grind these lightly until everything in the composition is about as fine as table salt, or a little finer. So my sparkler composition is now finished, and it's just a light gray powder. And this 10 grams that I've made will be enough to make over 100 sparklers. You wouldn't think that this combination of ingredients would be all that hard to figure out to get these sparklers to work, but I promise you it was. And that's because there's a second factor here, almost as important as the composition itself. In fact, maybe it's more important, and that is what paper is used to make these sparklers. I've tried every type of paper I could think to try over the many years I've experimented with these sparklers, and nothing worked until I found these. This is a party streamer, and this is perfect for a few reasons. The main reason why this paper works so well when other paper fails is because party streamers are treated to be fire resistant, so that they don't catch fire from your birthday candles. You might think that's a little strange, seeing as how we intend to light this paper on fire, but it will still burn, so long as the pyrotechnic composition is rolled inside. What the fire resistance will do is allow the sparkler to burn without the paper giving way and catching on fire itself where it's not supposed to. Finally, I am now prepared to assemble my fireworks, starting with a piece of this streamer paper, maybe about six inches long. Assembling these sparklers can go quite quickly at this point. The first step is to take my length of tissue paper and fold it lengthwise so that I have a small hollow that can hold some composition. I then scoop the smallest little amount 
out of my mortar and pestle and pour it into the end of this paper. If I measured the amount of composition that I'm using here, it would come in at probably less than one tenth of a gram. And you can see how it is sort of spread over about a one inch length of the very end of this paper. I then encapsulate the powder by folding it over and rolling it. Now at this point, it's only very loosely held. So to finish this off, I grab this end and begin to twist. And as I twist, I allow the paper in my other hand to slip through my fingers, forming a nice tightly wound tail to this sparkler. And that is a complete sparkler. It's that simple. One last modification I like to make is to just trim the excess on the bottom off so that we get down to the portion that has composition right away. This small step makes a surprisingly big difference in how well these perform. And that's it. With a little practice, these can be made in under 10 seconds each. And it only took me about 10 years to figure out how. So now let me move this extra composition out of the way and I'll show you how they work. Now, when we first ignite one of these sparklers, nothing too terribly exciting happens. There's a little bit of flame, a little bit of sparks, but soon we notice that the ash starts to get consumed with a small ball of slag that slowly climbs upwards. And quite soon we'll see this ball of slag start to emit sparks. Now this is a reaction between the polysulfides that are left over from the burning sulfur and the carbon that was in the charcoal as well as the paper that's still being consumed and that's producing the sparks that you see. Sometimes these sparks can be quite dense, other times the sparkler can be short-lived and the sparks can be very fine. It all depends on how much of the composition you use in your wrapper as well as the charcoal that is used in the composition. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I really enjoyed finally being able to present this project and have a working result. If you really enjoyed this video, please support my channel on Patreon. I could really use your support and it would go a long way to help me continue making projects like this. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes to put these videos together, so your Patreon support would mean a lot. Please leave me comments below. I still read all of my comments and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.